Well, it's been a while since I've done a video, and the reason I'm doing this one is because I finally uh, received some time to where I could go back out to the internet and see how some of the projects that I presented were progressing, and I was quite surprised to find that the diode electrolysis project seemed to just die after I uh, did a couple of videos on that. So what I've got to do is show you something additionally here because this is a fantastic project which is the answer to a lot of things and I hate to see it just sitting out there and no one's doing anything with it. So let me show you what the setup's going to be and I may do this in more than one video. Uh, it all depends. I really get tired of sitting there for hours uploading these things. But here's the setup. These are two ferrite beads. They're the same type that are used here on the exciter circuit boards for filtering. And what I've done is hooked them into my terminal strip. Here we have two 1 in uh, 4148s. And you see they're hooked up opposite out to the uh, ferrite beads. I have one white lead. I have one small capacitor. Now, I, I plan on going through this by steps, but I'm going to go ahead and leave the capacitor in. I, there's no sense in just going from the, the beads, the diodes, the lead, and then adding the capacitor. Let me say that by the addition of the capacitor across the LED, we increase the electrolysis as well as the charge flowing through the LED significantly. So. Let me assure you that if you do it without the capacitor, it will improve with the capacitor. And so what I'm going to use for my cell is a 150 milliliter lab beaker. And I'll fill it up to 150 milliliters. The outside is wrapped with that aluminum tape that I always use. And what we're going to do is we have an uh, L3 here. now. I assure you this is a modified L3, so be aware of that. The reason it's modified is I've taken a couple of turns off to get the frequency up closer to what we have to have here. And this is a student grade exciter. And what that means is that if we get down here and look close, we have sockets on almost about everything. The filter capacitor, the base resistor, uh, we have a connector and some sockets out here, and also the addition of the tuning capacitor here. That's to make it possible for changing parts and observing the, the effects that it has on the board. So this is not really a standard exciter board. You see also I've got sockets here. Now this does not have the 10 microhenry choke in it. I'm using the wire, the bobbin for L2. I'm using a larger filter capacitor. And my base resistor is a 10 mega ohm, not the 1 mega ohm that comes normally on the boards. So that's a 10 mega ohm resistor. So rest assured, there are some changes here also. Uh, I'll probably describe in more detail later. I'm a little modified L3. That's only to get me to the frequency so I don't have to play around so much in tuning it. The beaker, the foil around the beaker the little ferrite uh, rods, the ferrite filters, the 1N4148s, gosh, don't use 914s, uh, the white lead, and a capacitor. And we're going to be using this supply. We're going to run it at 12 volts. I have a current limited to 100 mils in case it should burn out a transistor. And so let me go ahead and fill the the beaker, I have some filtered water here, and let me, it filters out the chlorine and stuff, which makes it a little nicer to, uh, to watch it for an extended period. Otherwise, we're going to green all up and get gunk all over the electrodes. So let me go ahead and fill it, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've got the water in the beaker. It's not critical on the amount. You just want it so that you can get your probes, your your uh, electrodes that you're going to be using down into the water just so that the the tip of the ferrite goes into the water like that. 
Now what I'm going to be using, because these are such fine bubbles, is I will go ahead and put a magnifier in front of it later on so we can see this better. But let's go ahead and start this cell. Now you will notice that this cell is not always self-starting. The reason for that is that 10 mega ohm base resistor. You have to give it a little extra spike, you know, to get it going. But let me go ahead and turn the supply on and come back and we'll start it up. Okay, what I've done now is I have applied power to it. If you look, we've got 12 volts, but it, it does not show any current yet. You can actually see a little white down there in that lead. Now what I'm going to do, you can tell that the exciter is not running. There's nothing coming out of the LED on the board. So I'll just go ahead and touch this, all right? There we go. That was enough to kick it off because of that. Oh, okay. I've got to keep going here for a second. Hold on a second. I may have to... Uh, adjust that tuning because it doesn't want to stay on with this fresh water. Let me just touch it up slightly. There we go. Okay, now it'll stay on and we'll tune it for we'll tune it for efficiency here as we go. But you can see this white lead is on and the only thing of course remember connected to that lead is the two diodes, the capacitor across the LED and the two electrodes down here into the water. And you can see that our exciter is functioning now. Now let's look up at the power supply. We're showing uh, 12 volts and as the electrolysis begins we started out there at 10 or 11 mils. We've dropped down to 8 now. And what we'll do is turn this light back on to aid us and go down in here and zoom in and see if we have electrolysis already. Oops. And sure enough, it's starting. So we'll go ahead and let that get established for a few seconds. And I see I'm up to seven minutes, eight minutes already. So what I'll do is take and pick up from this point on another video. I hate much going over about 10 minutes on one. But we'll let it go ahead and get itself established here for a few seconds before we leave it. Now you can start to see... Let me move this out of the way. Maybe we can do it without... Okay, anyway, we'll go ahead and leave that now, and I'll go ahead and uh, upload this video, and then we'll continue on with what I want to demonstrate. Here's the whole purpose of this. We are doing electrolysis via the SEC exciter with inductive coupling, capacitive coupling actually, to the water at a correct frequency, and we are also allowing the charge between the two electrodes that are, that are actually doing the electrolysis to flow through the LED and provide light flow back into the cell to complete the process. And what I want to show is that this is fantastic in two ways. We can scale this up to where we produce usable amounts of gas as well as usable amounts of light while we're producing the gas. So I'm going to go ahead and pull away here and I will show you the frequencies, uh, what the spectrum looks like here and what the frequency is that I have tried to reach and the significance of the third harmonic of that frequency. So let me go ahead and load this one up and by that time the cell will be fully established and we can continue on.